I've seen a lot of AI stuff pop up recently. Uh, some of it is really good information and some of it's actually total crap. And I think there's a lot of people that are putting things out there to either sell a course or get some clicks or get views. And I wouldn't say I'm an expert. Uh, we just did a video recently that I really enjoyed with a guy named Brett Moreno. Him and I talked about this for a while. I've been using GPT-3 for a while on the marketing side. And fundamentally, I think for real estate investors, there's some things you guys can do on the marketing side right now, but it's going to be game changing in the future. And I'll show you a couple things that um, that I'll recommend you guys keep an eye on. And um, and then we can kind of like talk and brainstorm and, and things like that. Yesterday, I spent some of my day creating a ton of videos. So my flight down from Atlanta to um, Key West, I made a ton of marketing videos for my Instagram and things like that. And I did a lot of the research on different GPT-3 tools. So like these are tools built on the language and background and history of um, AI. And so chat GPT is just one one thing, like one piece of software, one item that can be run on this. I'll show you some other tools that I use and kind of how I use it today. And then we can talk about like the application to some of the stuff that you guys are doing. Number one, I think just marketing in general for um, using AI is very powerful. So you guys are doing a lot of marketing, whether you know it or not. You're marketing to sellers, you're marketing to buyers, you're marketing to lenders. Um, you're, you're posting on Facebook, you're writing emails, you're doing all this kind of stuff. The thing that I use it for mostly is to save me time and also give me new ideas. Jasper is a tool that I've been using for a very long time. I'll show it to you guys today. It's, it's a paid tool. We've been using it to um, create different headlines, different hooks. You can, you can use it to kind of optimize even a paragraph, write a blog post, all kinds of stuff like that. And then recently, obviously, ChatGPT came out and that really like blew up. AI in our space and people talking about it and what you can use it for and things like that. If you guys haven't ever used it, I'm going to walk through it. I'll share some stuff. Um, I'll watch the chat. And if you guys have questions on it, then uh, just jump in with questions as we go. So uh, this is one tool that I use. It's called Jasper. It's a paid tool. You guys can do a little bit of free stuff in there for a little bit, a couple of searches and things like that. Uh, but after that, they're going to make you pay for it. Uh, but you can see, I'll just kind of scroll down through some of this stuff. Just so you guys know, there's these are AI tools built off of GPT-3. And uh, GPT-3 has a lot of information in it, scours a lot of the internet, a lot of these uh, things that are out there on public records up to about 2021. So if it's after 2021, then they don't really have the information. So like if you look up something that was more recent, things like that, the language is not going to have a lot of uh, like newer information. As it keeps developing and keep updating, you're going to see it's going to grab more recent, recent things. So like if you were like, oh, you can find out if you have uh, like have a house or you own something or these kind of things. Like um, if you start looking up things that are more recent current events, it's just not there. When you talk about comparison to like Google and some of the other things, it's going to save you a ton of time looking through stuff, asking questions to chat GPT or something like this, but you're not going to see something like that. That's more current event stuff. Justin Taylor, I don't know how you're drawing on my screen, but uh, you are. I don't know how that, I don't, I have no idea how you're doing that. It's pretty awesome. So right here, you can see some of these things like I can do, uh, I can create Amazon products. So they, they, they structure it such that you can do certain things like a, write a blog post outline, a paragraph, uh, blog topics. I use this a lot, content improver. I'll write a piece of content and then I'll have it rewrite the content with content improver. You can see email subject lines, you can adjust uh, Facebook ad text, uh, FAQ generators, uh, Google ads, like ad headline, paragraph generator. So um, I can generate paragraphs, write the perfect headline, uh, photo post captions. So I can write cap, uh, catchy captions for my Instagram posts, stuff like that. SEO, it's got all kinds of things in here. I use this a lot for YouTube videos. So hooks, descriptions, things like that. So video descriptions in YouTube, you can actually take like the whole write up and just say, hey, write me a write me a description. I'll use this in a second. I'll show you kind of how I do this for marketing first. And then I'll say, here's the application that I see to what you guys do. So again, this is Jasper. So it's a, a tool that's been out there for a while, probably probably years. I've been using it for, for a little while now, definitely not years. Um, ChatGPT, this is a newer product. I think it came out in November. And this is what kind of like has been all the talk. And you can see some of this stuff. I have different chats that I've that I've created over the past. These are just chats that I've saved from time to time. So, and I'll actually show you some of this stuff as we as we go through some of the searches that I did, things like that. I was going through and looking at a business success Instagram. We can actually go through and look at all of my, like all of my prompts and everything that I did. And we'll do that in a second. Um, but ChatGPT, the way this works is you can just write some stuff. So let's just say, let's say as an example, I want to do this call for real estate investors to show them how to use chat GPT. I'm going to do a call and I want to promote it. I want to talk about it. I want to put it out there on social media and I want to attract a bunch of people, get a bunch of people to opt into the call, right? Let's, does that sound like a, a good, 
start of like, we're doing it right now. I've made a post inside of our Facebook groups. Let's do this. So basically the way this works is I just ask questions to this, this product. So this is a AI tool where I just start asking some questions. I'll show you guys kind of how I do it. So if I want to create something that's going to get somebody to like opt in on an organic post for me to get them to come to my call, write a Facebook post, uh, inviting other real estate investors to a Zoom call about chat GPT and all the, I got to close the chat here so I can see it. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it there. So most people are going to use it this way. I would probably go on to ask a bunch more questions or write a bunch more in the beginning. But the other thing I want to show you is this is a plugin for Jasper. You can see it's the same uh, image and I'll kind of talk about this in a little bit, but this is one of my Chrome extensions for Jasper. So I'm going to hit enter there and let's see what it says. Uh, hey, fellow real estate investors, I want to invite you all to a Zoom call next week where we can chat about the amazing things ChatGPT can do for our businesses. From streamlining our research and analysis to automating tedious tasks, this AI tool has the potential to revolutionize the way we work. Let's get together and explore how we can implement it in our day-to-day -day operations. Date and time will be announced soon. Hope to see you there. Um, at this point, I want to make some changes here. I'm like, uh, this, is, this is not really exciting. Uh, hello, fellow real estate investors. I want to invite you to chat. Uh, so what I would want to do is just make some adjustments. So I could say something like, make this more um, more about how it how chat GPT will change the game for real estate investors moving forward and how much more money they will make by attending the call. Okay, attention to all real estate investors. Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Join me on a, a Zoom call next week where we'll dive into the game-changing capabilities and how it will revolutionize the way uh, we invest in real estate. By attending this call, you'll learn how this AI tool can help you make more informed decisions, increase your productivity, and ultimately make you more money. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Stay ahead of the game and join to see the future of real estate. I'll tell you what, in the chat, okay, great question. I'm struggling to come up with good questions for ChatGPT. Any advice? So we'll talk about that, about prompts. Like, what am I going to say? What's going on? And so what I want to do is uh, write, I'm going to tell it to write a catchy headline for this call that will stop real estate investors from scrolling on Facebook and want to come to the call. Okay. Unlock the key to making more money in real estate. Join the chat GPT Zoom call. So now I can refine this. I could say, make this headline more witty. Okay, get rich with ChatGPT, the AI tool that will level up your real estate investing, real estate game. So I feel like we're getting somewhere now, like where this might stop someone from doing that. And then, so I might want that headline and then say, uh, write me five bullet points of how ChatGPT will change their real estate investing business and make them more money. So if I put get rich with ChatGPT, the AI tool that will level up your real estate investing game, I write the, like, this is what you're going to learn on this call. Make these bullet points. ChatGPT can quickly analyze large amounts of data, such as property listings and market trends to identify profitable investment opportunities. Automate tedious tasks like property research and market analysis, giving you more time to focus on closing deals and making money. Help you make more informed decisions by providing accurate, up-to-date information and predictions about the market. Streamline your workflow by integrating with other tools and software you already use, making your business more efficient and productive. Give you a competitive edge over other investors by providing you with cutting edge technology and access to valuable insights and predictions. So if I gave you that headline and these five bullet points, is you think it's more likely that people will be on this call right now? Yes? No? What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So me too. I think it's, a, I think it's a, a pretty good bullet point here. This could also be five bullet points that I use to make a YouTube video or something about doing something like this, right? And so on the marketing side, you can see this is kind of how I would use it. And then what I would probably do, and I just want to show you kind of how I use this tool now is I've got this headline, right? Get rich with ChatGPT, the AI tool to level up your real estate game. Then what I would do is I would go over to Jasper and I would typically go to the content improver. So right here, I would put in the content uh, and I use Witty a lot. Like uh, my tone of voice is like witty. I might like write snarky. And there's different tones that I can put in here, like whatever I want. I want funny. I want any any tone of voice that I that I want. In fact, so if I want 20 different tone of voices, I, I was struggling to come up with any of them. I was like, I use witty and snarky pretty much nonstop. So now I've got sarcastic, professional, casual, optimistic. Like I don't, e I couldn't even come up with more than two or three right there. So there's 20 different tones of voice that I could put in here. If I want to do 50 or hundred, it would give me hundred. So I'll put witty and then I'll generate these tone of voice. So right here, now, if I want to write a different headline, I could start messing with some of these. 
become a real estate mogul with the help of ChatGPT, the artificially intelligent tool designed to take your game to new heights. Get ready for stacks on stacks in an empire that never sleeps. Unlock your financial potential with ChatGPT, the AI assistant that will take your real estate career to the next level. Get ready for wealth, ease, and success. Uh, ready to rake it in. ChatGPT's AI-driven real estate tool is here, helping you take your real estate game up a notch. So now I'll kind of go to the content improver is usually how I do this because I have to do like lots of prompts in ChatGPT, right? ChatGPT, I have to act, like ask it what I want next. Like I could say, make it better. I could say, make it longer. I could say, make it shorter. I could say, put in bullet points, all this stuff. But what this does is it allows me to do, uh, to, to kind of break down better headlines, better posts, better uh, content, things like that. Same with YouTube videos, all kinds of stuff like that. So just to show you guys, that's how I use this. Jasper combined with ChatGPT now, since it came out the past like three months. That's how I've been using it. Um, so what you guys see here is this is just one example. Okay. So now what I want to do is get more into real estate. And I actually like when I was, I was kind of messing with this the other day and I went in here, let's see what I, uh, okay. I said, AI replace investors. So I started, I started trying to see like how far back it would go and see if it knew who seven figure flipping was, what seven figure flipping mastermind was, things like that. Um, so I started asking it questions. I have a whole nother one. That's like, I think it might be in this one, like who's Bill Allen, all that stuff. And so I started asking about what seven figure flipping and they start talking about like, it's about like flipping assets, buying and selling websites, apps. I said, what's the seven figure flipping mastermind? And then it's like, it's a pro, it's a group of people that flip assets. And then I said, what's the real estate mastermind? Look what it said. The seven figure flipping real estate mastermind is a program or group of people who come together to learn and share strategies and tactics for buying and selling real estate properties for large profit. Variation of the seven figure flipping mastermind. Um, which is focused on real estate instead of digital assets. Program usually led by an experienced real estate investor who has successfully flipped properties for large profits. The program is designed to teach participants how to identify profitable real estate opportunities, and negotiate deals, and grow their real estate investing business. The Mastermind Program is usually a membership-based program that offers access to training, resource, community of like-minded people who are also interested in the seven-figure flipping real estate business model. I was like, perfect. They nailed it. That was great. I said, who is the owner? They said, I don't know. I said, who is Bill Allen, the real estate investor? I could not find any widely known public figure or notable person by the name Bill Allen, who's a real estate investor. I was like, okay, this thing's got a problem. I need to fix this. You guys will see a lot more content from me because I want ChatGPT to know who I am when GPT-4 comes out. Okay, how can AI replace inside sales reps on the phone? So I just started, I asked a couple of questions like that. Artificial intelligence. Because I think that this is the this is the next thing. This is the next thing that will happen. AI will replace inside sales reps on the phone. And that, this is my prediction like after this. Artificial intelligence has the potential to automate many of the tasks currently performed by inside sales reps, such as lead generation, qualification, and scheduling appointments. So this is how they can do it. Virtual sales assistants, AI-powered VAs can answer customer questions and schedule appointments, freeing up sales reps to focus on more complex tasks. Chatbots that run on GPT-3 and ideally GPT-4. Predictive dialers, so AI dialers that can uh, call leads and connect with them with the best suited sales reps automatically and lead scoring. So they can analyze uh, lots of different data sources and things like that. So I start, I've just been asking it questions like this. And so you guys can do the same thing, like to give you some ideas of what's next for you and what you could potentially do. I want to show you guys one uh, tool here. So this is a customer led conversational assistant. So answer every call 24 seven called Polly. And Brent showed me this the other day. And I was like nerding out on this the past like three days. And if you watch this, you get human-like voice assistance for superhuman customer experiences, really incredible. So uh, multiple languages, all kinds of different stuff. I would highly encourage you guys to go there and listen to it. If you don't know, it was probably like 2019 or 2020 when Google um, basically rolled out. They showed you how they booked a, a uh, restaurant. I think it was a restaurant. They booked a table at the restaurant and it was all AI on the phone talking to the person that they were booking a restaurant with. Um, so this, this technology has been around for two to three years. It definitely exists. There's um, a wide uses. It's advancing. It's going to be an incredible. This is definitely going to replace a lot of your inside sales reps and phone people in the future. So there was one comment, uh, Derek said, we need to remember the information chat GPT has access to is anything that's on the interweb. Um, it may or may not be accurate or correct. Uh, true, and but it doesn't have everything. So that's the thing. It doesn't have everything. It, it's a GPT-3 goes up to a certain period of time. And that's what you guys have to uh, have to think about. So when you're using it, it's like, it might not have a lot of current information on it. So when you're asking questions, it's more like research-based and things like that right now. And so um, as it gets more information, it will start being able to get smarter. Have you found any biases within the platform? Uh, so, okay, so that, that was probably the answer to that. So yeah, I do think there is some of that. However, I, I also think that it does have a lot of uh, fact-checking options, but what you're gonna see is, is the more misinformation that it gets fed, 
there's not a lot of manual work going in there saying no, 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 no. So I haven't asked it like a whole ton of stuff about like COVID and, and other things like that, that are really just kind of widely like disputed vaccines, stuff like that. Um, but if you get into that side, there may be some, some sort of bias one way or the other based on information that's out there. Um, and I agree. It will know me this time next year. It will know me chat GPT four or GPT four better know who I am. So, um, I was talking to Brent about that GPT four, and we were talking about how it's pro it, it, ha it will have like the same amount of like uh, synapse firing and information as the human brain and be able to operate at like hundred percent capacity where the human brain is so powerful, but we don't operate at a very low capacity. Can you imagine if we're at, you ever seen like the movie, I forget what it was, but it's like the human brain operating at hundred percent level or getting close to it. It was like yeah, limitless is insane. Like, so that's what uh, GPT-4 is going to be. All right. So let's, let's use this a different way. So let me show you, you know, let me show you another one that I did. Let's see. I was talking about success, uh, business net worth. Um, so I was kind of like thinking about net worth to create a, a video about uh, net worth and how important it is and things like that. So I said, how important is it to track your net worth as a business owner? And then it tells me, you know, tracking your net worth is important because it provides a snapshot of your financial health, allows you to monitor your progress over time, helps you understand your assets and liabilities, gives you a clear picture of value of your business. Regularly monitoring your net worth, you can make informed financial decisions about your finances and make adjustments as needed to improve your bottom line. Additionally, it's important um, to understand your company's overall financial status to make better decisions. And I said, can you make this a hook for an Instagram reel or a marketing headline? And they said, unlock the true value of your business, learn the importance of tracking your net worth as a business owner and make informed decisions for your financial success. I said, make this more punchy and attention grabbing. So a business owner who hears it stops in their tracks to watch the full one minute reel. And it said, discover the secret to financial success as a business owner, uncover the power of tracking your net worth and take control of your financial future. And then I copied and pasted what it was up there before in the first one. I said, can you bullet point this? So then it bullet pointed it because I want, I wanted those. So I wanted those four bullets for my video. And I just wanted them bullet pointed instead of in a paragraph form. And then I could just, I could say, pull out the individual tabs. And so I can make my video. And so that took me, I don't know, maybe like three minutes to get me some information in my head to create this video. And then I started talking about um, saving my way to a million dollars. There's another video. So I just created these ideas of videos that I was going to make. And if you guys, if you guys go on Instagram, you're going to see these coming up. I made them in the airplane on the flight from Atlanta down to uh, Key West. And you'll see exactly how they come out. They're one minute. I just talked about the bullet points and expound on them with my, in my own words. Uh, I said, why shouldn't you try to save your way to a million dollars, but instead build your active income to make more money? Uh, trying to save your way to a million dollars can be a slow and difficult process, especially if you're not here earning a high income or have a significant amount of expenses. Saving a large portion of your income can be challenging and may require drastic lifestyle changes or cutting back on expenses that are important to you. On the other hand, Build your active income, i.e. the money you make from your job, allow, allow you to earn more money and reach financial goals quicker. This can be done by increasing your income through promotions, starting a side hustle or business, or investing in assets to generate passive income. So I took that and I said, write a hook for this video. It was unlock the secret to financial success as a business owner, discover why building your active income is the key to increasing your net worth fast and take control of your financial future. I splintered this out into three more, two more videos. So now I have three. So I was like, okay, this is why you can't save your way to a million dollars. This is why you need to increase your active income. And this is how you can turn your active business into passive income. And I made three different videos. And then I went on to ask it a ton of more questions. All right, let's go to the real estate side of this stuff for you guys now. Like as real estate investors, what do you care about? I have a couple ideas, but I, I want you guys to... Um, I want you guys to think about this a little bit. What are you guys doing right now? Where are you marketing? What are you, how are you raising money? Like these kind of things. And what are, what are some struggles that you're having right now in, in the business? Using it to write ads for disposing deals. Yeah, selling deals. Cold call scripts for our callers. Yeah, generate cold calling scripts. Creating Facebook posts for company profiles that are catchy and relevant. Yeah, SOPs for sure. Um, like if you have a task or some things that, are, that you're doing right now, writing tasks and to-dos, how does this replace the caller? So- um, okay. So right now, right now it really doesn't. What I see is available to everyone right now is saving time. So writing an email, creating a headline, maybe a, a postcard like here. So I like to use prompts like in the beginning. So act as a real estate investor who wants to get a great deal and write me a four sentence paragraph. I'm looking for like a postcard. As a seasoned real estate investor, I have the resources and experience to close quickly and efficiently on your property. I'm also able to offer competitive prices and can provide a smooth and stress-free selling process for you. By working with me, you can have the cash in hand and move on to your next chapter without any hassle. I'm committing to making the process as easy and beneficial as possible for you. So this can be something that is put in there. 
Um, the other thing that I might say, um, so what do you guys think about that? Like, is that something that you would write to a seller? Is that something that you think could be expounded upon? Texting back and forth with sellers. Let's uh, let's talk about that one next. So give me some feedback. This one, dumb it down. Okay, um, I'm a real estate investor and I want to buy your house. I can pay you a fair price, close quickly and make the process easy for you. Selling your house to me is a good deal for you. <laughs> me personally, I like the first two lines and I want to add something at the end, that would be a little bit more of a, of a hook. So I would like, I'd say, keep the first two sentences and add a call to action at the end that really makes the seller want to call me. I'm a real estate investor and I want to buy your house. I can pay you a fair price, close quickly, make the process easier for you. Don't wait. Call me now to discuss how I can help you sell your house quickly and hassle-free. So something like that, I would uh, potentially be like uh, post on Facebook or Craigslist or something like this, where I can just iterate that. And then what I would do, like the way that I use this is I would take it over here to Jasper and I'd put it in the content improver. And I would say, uh, what tone of, I still like witty. Let me just, let's go, let's go with witty here. Tired of the thought of selling your house? Don't worry. I'm here to make it easy. As a real estate investor, I can offer you a competitive price for your home and close fast, giving you one less thing to stress about. So don't put this off any longer. Let's have that chat now so we can get things moving towards an effortless sale. Are you wanting to make a quick move on your property? Then let me help. As a real estate investor, I'm ready to purchase your house. No waiting required. Plus with my fair offers and fast closings, the process will be smooth sailing for both of us. Call today. We can get started right away. Selling your home can be overwhelming, but get in touch with me, the savvy real estate investor, and you won't have to worry about it for a second. Sure, I'll pay you fair price and close quickly, but more importantly, I'll make sure this process is stress-free. So don't wait another minute. Call now and find out how we can expedite the sale of your house. So I love this one right here, this third one. So what I would do here, so I just copied it. And now what I would do is I would come back to chat GPT. So this is, these are the kind of things that I don't see anybody like really like going in detail about that I think are really important. So I would go back to chat GPT here and I would say, write five different variations. So now chat GPT is going to write five different variations of this. I could also, so I have two options now. I can come back to this. I can have it write five different variations. Or what I can do is I can copy that one that I like. I could put it in the content improver and I could get three more iterations of that from Jasper. I find ChatGPT is a little bit, when I give it better prompts, like somebody was asked, if it was, somebody was asking about how do I write better prompts is now I'm saying, okay, I get five different variations of this. And now I have something to post in five different Facebook groups or the same Facebook group five times in a row, like five different days in a row where I'm, I'm doing different things. There's different hooks. There's different things like that. You guys can read these, but there's going to be five different ones that are going to be very similar to the one that I liked that I got from Jasper. So a lot of times in ChatGPT, what I find is a little bit hard for me to like pull what I want out. So if I can go to a content improver like that, improve the content, I can bulk it up. And it's going to make it really punchy and, and heavy on marketing and sales, and then come back to this platform and say, give me five variations of this or 10 variations or 20 variations of this. So there's a couple of ways that I would use something like this for potentially a, a Facebook post, an ad, something like that. I got a question. It's uh, Derek asked, do I use the thumbs up, thumbs down function on results and explain why you reacted that way? What I do in here, you guys can see it, like all my chats, I'll save all my chats. I have a, a couple different accounts because sometimes I can't get into my account. And so I'll have multiple different accounts. I'll save my chats. So if I want to talk about this, so like I'll come back to this, you can use the thumbs up, thumbs down on there. Um, that's fine. But I just, I'll come back to this and I have the thread that I'm already talking on. So then I'll come back. Like if I want to come back to a motivated real estate seller that I'm that I'm doing something like this on, like you'll see if I'm talking about money and net worth, I'm going to go back to that chat GPT chat that I have already set up. That's about money. And I'm going to keep talking to it because now it knows what I like and don't like because I say, hey, do more of this, do more of this, do less of this, make it shorter, make it longer. Give me a headline, give me a hook, give me an offer at the end, give me a call to action. And it's it's learning that in that same chat. So when I go back to that chat, I still am going to have that same conversation with it. Does it make sense? So it's like, if you're having a conversation with somebody and you, you, you just met them for the first time and you're learning more about them, and then you see them the next day, you understand a little bit of the intricacies that they have and like what they like and what they don't like. And some of the things that they told you about their family, about their upbringing, where they live, those kind of things, same thing here. Like you have a conversation with it, it starts learning about it. So um, so I do that more than the thumbs up, thumbs down. But again, like I'm, I'm pretty new to chat GPT specifically. 
So I'm kind of learning this along with everyone else. I don't know if the thumbs up or thumbs down really um, are going to affect it because just because I, I don't use it that much, uh, but I do keep my threads. Um, I'm going to come back to some of these other questions. Josiah said, can this be interactive chats on a website or Facebook question? So um, there are chat bots that use GPT-3 to like the same platform, the same conversation that people are having. Um, like, hey, I need help. I need some support, things like that, where there's AI chat bots. And those are going to get way more uh, prevalent now that this is all going down and, and growing. So you'll, you have a chat bot on your website that they're asking questions to. It'll uh, replace customer service and, and a lot of the people that are, are doing some of those tasks in your company. Oh, and, and immediately connect with a closer on our team. That's the next thing that you'll see a lot more of. So there are there's people developing on GPT-3 on all of these platforms to have chat bots and things like that, that they can have that conversation. There's already There already are chat bots that, that are doing this. Um, Blaze, we talked to a guy who's, who's doing this chat with Adam Whitney and us. So, um, we'll, we'll, I'll get some more information for the February event on that for you guys. And, uh, but the, I would say in the marketplace is going to be, is going to be flooded with this stuff very soon. And so I think specific chat bots for real estate investors on websites and PPC ads and in everywhere is going to be a lot more prevalent than it is right now. Uh, same with the phone, the phone systems. So this, um, poly that I showed you guys there, you're going to see a lot more of these in the marketplace. Uh, coming up for sure. So Josiah used it to generate cold call scripts for his callers. Same thing, like you can um, you can have ask it questions to you know build a cold calling script, things like that. Creating Facebook posts, company profile SOPs. Justin said I asked how, I asked it how to build a PPC in house, so PPC campaign in house, and it gave him some off, awesome info. That's great. Okay, so how can I? Justin asked how can I automate this with texting sellers back and forth. There's a couple things that you could do. So I think you, what you mean is like how can if a seller texts me, how can I get AI to respond to the texts up with the sellers, not necessarily like how could it write better seller scripts. So right now you could write better text message scripts. So like I could say like write five short text messages. Okay, so if you guys are texting right now, put all the words that you can't say in text that it'll get blocked by the provider right now. So what are the words that you can't say in text if you guys are doing like large scale texting? You, you probably know, I know a few of them. So I asked it to remove house, home, sell, sale, and replace it with something similar. If property is a problem, I can now say also replace property with something else. So ready to dispose of your property. Let me help you expedite the process. Call how, call now to find. So this can create like short text messages for me and make adjustments and use synonyms and things like that to remove some of those things. Um, so Adam said offer close fast. Also, uh, I don't see any offers in here, stuff like that. So I could I could say here's the list of things that can't be included, stuff like that. So. This is how I use it for you, Justin, as far as like, like texting back and forth, it, it will get there soon. It will get there very soon where you have some AI plugins on text apps, things like that, that, that can be used for this stuff. It's just like, oh, I, I told you I was going to show you my ja the Jasper plugin and I haven't done it yet. I'll show you in a second. Jeremy said, I generate a lot of leads to my website. Some people don't fill out form or call. I'd love to have a chat bot that can answer questions and respond like a human and be coordinated with our team, with our team calendar and book appointments, speed wins and... So you have, if you get a lot of leads to your website, a lot of people that are hitting your website and you know traffic, um, I'll give you a little tip for that. Uh, yeah, Jenny said the variations will work good for SMS too. Absolutely. Um, ask if we do that in 10 words or less. You can do that. Short or less. The world world reads 140 characters at a time. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's, you can say dumb it down. Like give me third grade, give me second grade, give me fifth grade, give me eighth grade, give me kindergarten, those kind of things. So if you go to retention.com, yeah, you're both right. Retention. So go to retention.com, Jeremy, and um, it'll it'll grab the IP and it'll actually give you a list of all their email addresses of the person who hits your landing page and doesn't do anything. So it's a, like an email scraper. You have to be very careful with this of how you like send them an email and follow up with them. But if somebody hits your page and doesn't fill out a form or something like that, you're most likely going to get like two or three of their email addresses that they're logged into or is in cash on their website. And then you'll have like a cold email list of people who have hit your website for some reason. And so it's really cool. We, um, we use it, but like, cause we have massive traffic, go to fliphackinglive.com, go to sevenfigureflipping.com, sevenfigurmultifamily.com, multifamilylivevent.com, um, sevenffbook.com, like everything, right? They just go to all these pages of ours, they look at it and then they bounce, especially Flip Hacking Live. That was the biggest thing for me. We had so much traffic to Flip Hacking Live's landing page but people weren't buying tickets or opting in. So I was like, how can I figure out who's going there? This kind of like grabs their email address and then we can send them like one-off emails uh, potentially to kind of warm them up and bring them back. Uh, maybe a discount code or something like that. So if you ever like hit a page 
and then you get like a discount code in your email and you didn't give them your email like 30 minutes later, they're probably using something like this to, to grab an email of yours that's uh, that's been cached. So quick marketing tip for you guys. That's like ninja stuff. I'd like to have ChatGPT or a bot go to Facebook investor pages and scrape email addresses to add to my buyer's list. Exactly. So we just did that. Uh, Brent and I, Brent Moreno and I did a call. We're sharing the screen. We we're working through ChatGPT a little bit. But what we did was we just went to, went to like a local Facebook group. So what I used to do is I used to have an, a VA search at signs in every Facebook group, like investor Facebook group, when I went into a new area. So I went into Nashville and every out at sign, they would copy and paste that, that email address into an Excel spreadsheet for me and then send it to me. And so it was a lot of manual labor it would take like, I don't know, like probably 12 to 18 hours to scrape the whole, the whole thing. Well, now um, what they can do is you can actually train a VA how to use this. And then what they can do is they can take all of those, just copy everything, paste it in here. And then and then ask ChatGPT to just say, give me only, give me a list of only email addresses and it'll pull out only email addresses that you can just copy and paste, save you hours and hours and hours of time, just doing like all the data mining and stuff like that. So if you think about that, like what data mining are you doing? Once you get raw data, how are you formatting it? How are you uh, compressing it, combining it, uh, replacing it, duplicating it, that kind of stuff, uh, filtering through. So it, it can do a great job of that. And we showed uh, some of the how-to on that. Let's talk, I, I had this idea yesterday and I, that I was thinking about. We make a lot of these investor Facebook pay, uh, posts. I've seen them where it's like, I did this. We made this much money for our investors on a deal, right? And uh, you could be the next one. So um, what I was thinking about is like, the avatar that you guys have is challenge. So I have an avatar of real estate investors wanting to grow and scale their real estate investing business to come into our mastermind, right? You guys have this avatar of like, you have buyers that you want to talk to online, you have sellers and you have investors. I had a Vaughn Bethel and Ben Morgan ask me at our one of our events that we did for some of the eight figure members. They said, like, how can I talk to all, all of those people? Like I have multiple avatars and I'm having trouble because these people don't want to see like the, how much money an investor made if they're selling their house. And I said, well, what if you could, what if you could kind of talk to all three of the people at the same time? You can make posts to all three where it's like, hey, I, we bought this house. We helped the seller in this situation. We helped this buyer. You know, They got a great deal. They found this house. They made some money on it. And we helped this investor. And you told stories like that, where it's like, hey, we're helping all of these people. And we helped the neighborhood, right? And so I wonder if we can do something like that, where it's, I want to make a post about that. So I wonder if I can, I'm going to try to tell it a story. Can you tell me a story, like a detailed story about these three people? So um, let's see, we bought a house for 50K that was in bad shape, needed a lot of work, and was inherited someone whose parents passed away. We sold it to another investor who fixed it up, improved the neighborhood, and made a profit for his company. He sold it to a great family who will who found their dream home. Our investor made this is a little out there because the investor is now I brought another party in, but we'll we'll make it work. Our investor on the property made ten thousand five hundred dollars in interest, loved it because they didn't do any work. Can you tell detailed story about this by painting the picture of everyone winning that I can post on social. Let's see what we get. So I just told a story that was pretty bad. Uh, once upon a time, there was a property that had seen better days. It had been inherited by someone whose parents had passed away and had fallen into disrepair. But a savvy real estate investor saw the potential in the property and decided to purchase it for 50000 The investor knew that the property needed a lot of work, but they also knew that with some time and effort, they could turn it into a beautiful home. They set to work and invested time and money into fixing it up and improving the neighborhood. The hard work paid off as the investor was able to sell the property to another investor for a profit. The second investor, so see, I brought, brought too many people in. We'll skip that paragraph. It'll probably leave. The person who purchased the property of 50 was able to make a profit of 10,000 by it. So they don't really get it in interest without having to do any of the work themselves. Everyone won in this situation. The first investor made a profit. The second investor made a profit and the family found their dream home. The story is a great reminder that with a little bit of time, effort, and a keen eye for potential, anyone can turn a rundown property into a beautiful home that brings joy to families for years to come. I would need, this would need some finessing for sure. I'd probably have to rewrite the first one, just copy and paste it and change it um, a little bit, but the way that I would use this is kind of like, 
I want to tell the story of three different avatars. Like we're helping everyone win. Like, and then I would, I would build this, build this out. I put it in the content improver most likely and see if I can make it like more of a sales and marketing type thing with a, with a hook at the end. That's, um, that's like driving people to come invest with us or, you know, Hey, if you're thinking about selling your house, we can help. If you're thinking about look, if you're looking for a house, we can help. And then if you're looking to just make money without having to do anything, it can help. So somebody in Facebook said, how much does it cost? So chat GPT is free right now. Chat GPT is free. I do see that a lot of people say that it can't even get on. So I was an early user. And so I, I shouldn't really say this without like, especially on a call like this, but I don't have a lot of problems getting on and using it. I actually have had a couple problems with like it spitting out, like it, it kind of glitching while I was using it. I just refresh it, but I've never had a problem getting into it myself. So like, I probably shouldn't say that out loud. Um, now I might use it at different hours than like prime, like heavy, heavy users are using it. But um, they they do have a paid version that's coming out now, so you can get on a wait list for paid version. I mean that I knew that was coming, and everybody else did too. Jasper costs a little bit of money. It's not a lot though. I think I pay. I I don't know actually. I'm probably it's probably under a hundred dollars a month, but I use it. I use it quite a bit. The other thing is like right here. This is the Jasper plugin. So I love this. I can be on Facebook, and I could say like I want to generate a paragraph that would captivate my readers. And I can say what my paragraph's about. I can do it all right here and I can click generate and it puts it right in my Facebook post. So like I'm on Facebook with this Chrome plugin, I go to these templates and I might want to like make a paragraph or a content improver. And I'll just write my content here that I was going to write like a Facebook post, put it in my, my witty tone of voice. So here in this thing, I've used witty, snarky, friendly, and bold. <laughs> so you guys can see on the drop downs. And I'll put it in there and then I'll generate it. It'll give me three outputs and I'll just click one and it just, there it is. It's in Facebook. So I don't have to like go to Jasper, go back. So it has this plugin that I really like. So Jasper does cost money. Scotty asked, how can I use it for multifamily? Very easily. I think on the multifamily side, it's like uh, here. Okay, let's let's do some multifamily. Let's do something for multifamily real quick. Real quick. So uh, multifamily, probably like the, one of the biggest things is like reaching out to brokers. So you're emailing brokers. And so like, um, I'm a multi-family apartment investor who is a general partner in 385 units across the Southeast. So I want to give it a little background on myself. 385 units across the Southeast. I'm looking for my next apartment to buy um, a short email that I can send to brokers. Okay, so subject, interested in multifamily apartment investment opportunities, dear broker name. Uh, my name is Bill Allen and I'm a multifamily apartment investor with experience as a general partner in 385 units across the Southeast. I'm currently searching for my next investment opportunity. I'm reaching out to you to see if you have any multifamily apartment buildings currently on the market that may fit my criteria. I'm interested in properties with a minimum of 100 units and I'm open to both value add and stabilize assets. I'm also open to properties in various stages of development, including new construction and repositioning opportunities. My investment criteria also includes geographic location, but I'm open to properties in the Southeast region. I'd greatly appreciate it if you could let me know if you have any listings that match my criteria, or if you could keep me in mind for any upcoming listings that may be a good fit. I would also be interested in learning more about any off-market opportunities that you may be aware of. Thank you for your time and consideration. Look forward to hearing from you. Best, your name. Now, next thing I would do is write me three different variations of this. This might take a little while. I'm not going to read them all, but now I would have three different variations. If I like this, if I didn't like it, or I wanted to change a couple things, like I was going to say, please add off market to the email. So if I didn't like it, first thing I would do is just iterate that a little bit. Like, Hey, could you change this? Could you change that? And then what I would do is I would say, write me three iterations. And in fact, I only am only doing three because it's going to take a while while you guys are here. I would do 10 normally or 20 or it, like, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to just sit here for a while. I'd go back. I'd go away and I'd do something else. And then I'd grab them and then I'd have them copy and paste them. Emailing brokers is one. I'm just going to stop generating this. It's going to take, it's going to take a while. So I can stop generating that. So now I have these three emails and I might want to like fine tune them, make them shorter, you know, make a couple of changes. But again, I, I might just, I might just copy and paste that and make my own tweaks in my email and send it. I can give this to my assistant. My assistant can then go send, blast it out to a bunch of people. Let's see if it can give me a list. Um, give me a list of the top 10 commercial real estate brokers in the Southeast. So we got the 
a list of well-known commercial real estate brokers. So they gave us a bunch of like big companies, right? See, this is where you're going to run into some of these things, okay? So it's going to give like point you to some places, but it's not going to give you a lot of like names and emails and things like that. So data that's very easy to get, but like scouring the, the things that you're doing on Google, like so people are like, oh, it's going to replace Google forever. Like it's not going to replace Google forever. And in fact, um, eventually we might get a lot more data mining from this where it can like pull those things or make those things easy, but we're still going to need some VAs and folks like that and a little bit of work right now until kind of the timeline catches up, it gets more real time, things like that. It starts searching the stuff like um, contact, you're going to, you're going to meet some barriers. However, it can break down barriers and timelines for you and make things faster. Anything you're doing right now, it can make it faster. Um, especially as you do this more and more often, you could probably see how I can use it. I'm just asking questions. I'm testing things. I'm trying things and it will adjust. Um, okay. Give me some more stuff in the chat, like some things that you guys would like to see me do, or you have questions right now. Cause I, some of you have never used this. The majority of you said you've never used any of these tools before. Um, and now I'm kind of showing you the way that I use them and, and structure it. Elaine said, it seems like a good tool for email content for sure. Email is great. Um, same thing. Uh, somebody else talked about uh, information like for posts and strategy and stuff like that. So we talked about marketing while you guys are thinking up some questions. We talked about marketing. We talked about like uh, posting on social media, Craigslist posts. Um, we talked about email content, we talked about a little about property descriptions. You're writing property description. Let's do that real quick. So if you're a realtor or you're, even if you're writing for dispositions, while you guys are dropping questions, drop a bunch of questions in the chat. Let's say, um, okay, we got a three, two brick ranch house, um, Pensacola, Florida. Let's see, um, 0.5 acres with a big backyard, two car garage, fully updated and renovated, open concept, white, shaker cabinets that everyone likes granite countertops so you could write like this kind of boring um, description in here let's see what else um quiet neighborhood i like to give it that little bit of like what i want the description to do so like please make a list most people say make a listing description for this house i want to say like that every buyer will want to jump in their car because what i've realized is when i when i add that it it, it, it gets more grandiose it gets more like amazing right because I'll, I'll ask for a hook and then I'll say, make that hook more punchy where people want to uh, stop scrolling. They, they see the headline and they're like, what is that immediately, right? So welcome to your dream home. This beautifully updated 3-2 brick ranch house sits on a spacious half acre lot in a peaceful neighborhood in Pensacola, Florida. As soon as you pull up, you'll be struck by the charming curb appeal and the inviting front porch. As you step inside, you'll be greeted by an open concept floor plan that is perfect for entertaining and everyday living. The fully updated and renovated interior boasts white shaker cabinets, granite countertops, and modern finishes throughout. The kitchen is a chef's dream with plenty of counter space, stainless steel appliances, and a breakfast bar. It just took the liberty to say that if you did that stuff, you probably have stainless steel appliances and a breakfast bar, right? The spacious bedrooms offer plenty of room for rest and relaxation, and the master suite is a true retreat with a spa-like bathroom. And I realize you guys, some of you might not be able to say master in your MLS like us, the backyard is an oasis, perfect for summer barbecues, gardening, and relaxing with friends and family. With a two-car garage and a big backyard, this home has everything you need and more. Located in a quiet neighborhood, but still close to all the amenities that Pensacola has to offer. Don't wait any longer. Schedule your showing today and come see this amazing home before it's too late. So like, I'm pretty much done there, right? Like, I have, I remember when I was listing houses, I took forever to write this stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to say this and this and this and this and these kind of things. So now just do this. And then honestly, I can put this in the content improver. I can put this... I would typically take some of these things and put it over there maybe to say like, how could I really kind of build it up? It said, can it make a few basic sentences more chatty? Yes. Give me an example of a basic sentence that you want to be more chatty. Okay. Have you used AI to create any flyers or art? So um, yes, I have. The, the Actually, the, the image that you guys saw for this was an AI picture of me. So I put in some photos of me and it, it created AI uh, generated images. They had like Spy Superman. They had like um, all... Um, Captain America, all these different like AI images uh, that that I put in there. So I've used some of that stuff. I'm doing more with, we're generating our YouTube, the thumbnails. So generating some more of those without the work that we're putting into generating thumbnails and things like that. And so like with the headline, like it's moving in that direction where it can create these thumbnails very quickly. You say what you want people to see and click on and they'll be able to generate that kind of stuff, which is uh, somebody's doing that right now. So all the things that people are doing, that's really like a digitally created item 
even editing, even editing the video itself. Like right now, ums, ahs, things like that can be edited out of videos very quickly by just running it through a generator um, right now automatically. So some of that stuff is, is happening. So um, we're using some of that stuff and you guys can, we'll be able to start seeing a lot more of that, I'm sure in the future of taking uh, artwork, stuff like that. So, uh, Scotty said, Facebook posts to generate more interest in investing with me. I'm an apartment investor. It kind of knows that, right? Because I already said it, but I, I want to say like act as an apartment investor. Here, let's do this. Let's say act act as um, act as an apartment investor who is looking to generate leads for people with money online and write a post on social media telling others what you do and how you can help them if they invest with you. Okay. Attention all investors. Are you looking to grow your portfolio and generate passive income? Look no further. As a seasoned apartment investor, I specialize in helping individuals like you find profitable investment opportunities. I have a proven track record of success and have helped many investors generate passive income through multifamily apartment investments. I have access to off-market deals and have the expertise to identify properties with high potential for return on investment. If you're ready to take the next step and learn how you can become a successful apartment investor, please re reach out to me. I would love to discuss how I can help you reach your financial goals and create a successful investment portfolio. Let's connect and make it happen. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions and let's start creating your passive income together. So here's an example of, of one of these, right? Now, the next one that I would say is I would be interested in like, write me a script for a Facebook live or YouTube video I can do on this topic. This is my favorite thing to do. Just so you, I'm, I think I'm showing you guys this for the first time, but I say, write me a script for this YouTube video. And not only is it going to write the text, but it's also gonna give you some ideas of where to shoot it. And this is what I love. So I do this all the time. I'm like, write me a script for a YouTube or for a, a Instagram, a one minute Instagram reel. I'm gonna do that next because this, this is a longer one, like a Facebook Live or a YouTube video. It's gonna be a little bit longer. So opening shot of you speaking in front of a background, introduce yourself and your experience as a multifamily investor. It talks about all your experience, right? Transition to discussing yeah. the benefits of multifamily apartment investing. It goes through why. Transition to discussing the current market conditions. So it talks about like all these things that somebody might be interested in if they're going to be investing with you. Transition to discussing how you can help other invest in, others invest in multifamily apartments. Closing shot and call to action. What are some ideal, what are some ideal locations to film this video? In front of one of your properties, at a local coffee shop or co-working space. And it says why. This is what I love. It like kind of expands on the stuff too. In front of a city skyline. I'm just going to stop it. There's a lot, a lot of stuff, right? Um, okay, so this is going back to, can we make a few basic sentences more chatty? So, okay, I'm going to leave the winky face out of this one. But basic sentence, uh, Bill is on vacation this week. We can schedule this call when he is in the office next week. I am on vacation this week. And this is what I do on my vacation. I'm going to copy this, the, the thing that you put in there, in the chat. Please sentences more chatty. They almost put a winky face in there. Sorry, Bill's out of the office enjoying his vacation this week, but no worries. We can definitely schedule a call for when he's back in the office next week. Just let me know what's worked for you and we'll make it happen. Um, you need pleasantries. Um, okay. So Bill is currently on vacation, taking some well-deserved time off, but don't let that stop you from getting in touch. We can easily schedule a call for when he's back in the office next week. Just let me know what date and time works for you and I'll make sure to get it on both of our calendars. In the meantime, if you have any urgent questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to assist with you. We'll make sure to schedule a call with Bill as soon as he's back in the office so you can get the answers you need to move forward with your plans. So just let me know when you're available and we'll schedule the call for next week. Next week. Thanks for understanding and have a great day. That's pretty good right there. Like I would much rather have that than Bill's on vacation next week. We can schedule this call when he's back in the office next week, right? So yeah, it can make it a lot more chatty. You can say, uh, you can say more chatty, keep going, like make it longer. Um, add in this here. Um, can you do this in a funny tone? Hey there. So unfortunately, Bill is currently on a much needed vacation, sipping Mai Tais on a beach somewhere and not checking his emails. But don't worry, we can totally schedule a call for when he's back in the office next week, next week, fresh and ready to chat. Just let me know a, a date and time that works for you and we'll make it happen. In the meantime, if you have any burning questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. I can't guarantee I'll have the answers, but I'll definitely do my best to help you out. And don't worry, we'll make sure to schedule a call with Bill as soon as he's back in the office so you can get your answers and move forward with your plans. So um, there you go. 
it will make your job much easier and all of your jobs easier. That's the uh, goal here. And I'm glad you guys are on this call so you can make your jobs easier. Uh, we had another one from Facebook. Can we uh, define how long the writing will be generated? So there's, I, I read that question two ways, like how long it takes to generate it or how, how much it is. So what I can do is I can say shorten that, make it longer, or I can say, um, I can, I can say like, give it to me in three sentences or four sentences or two paragraphs, or I can say, take out the second paragraph. I can do all, all kinds of stuff. Um, I, the way I use this just as a kind of a wrap up here is I use chat GPT these days to give me ideas and content. And then what I do is I take it to Jasper to really dial it in. And then sometimes I'll come back to chat GPT to kind of dial it in even more. And so that's the kind of structure I use. And I, I hope this is helpful for you guys. The other thing that I that I see here, <clears throat> number one, right now I see using it to save time and generate more kind of like marketing, more posts, more kind of content. I do think that next is going to be like we talked about, kind of chat bots, phones, phone systems, auto, automatic text platforms, things like that. And then after that, um, it'll get interesting. There's probably a bunch of uh, CRM, most likely to sell type stuff, real like higher tech, uh, bigger technology platforms that are going to uh, come through. And I, I'm really excited for business owners who, who can start using some of this stuff to really save your time and start teaching your team and your staff to use it too. Because it's great. Like what I remember, I used to take a, a sheet of white paper and just write down the steps of everything that we were doing. And now what I would say is kind of like, we can break out checklists. We can break out process procedures, things like that, using this these platforms. And really kind of, if you can automate your job, imagine what somebody who is in the majority of their job is administration, right? Your big picture vision and business owner and leader. Can you imagine somebody inside your company that's administratively driven? And everybody's talking about like, it's going to put them out of a job. There's, it can go one or two ways. You can put them out of a job or can it make them way better at their job? And it can allow them to do 10 times more than they're doing right now in the same amount of time. And if they can pick up on it and use it and become a tool, like a real amazing person inside your company and allow them to grow, like it's going to give them next level opportunities. Like the, the people that are out there, like shouting from the mountaintops about this, talking about the skies falling and people are going to all be put out of their jobs by AI. I, I, I would push you guys to figure out how to plug your people into this and how to show them how to use it to help them with uh, the, what they do in their business and, and build it out. So we had a big marketing meeting a couple of weeks ago and I started talking about this with my copywriter, right? So a copywriter today, seeing all this new, all these YouTube videos and stuff like that, a copywriter, people are saying like copywriters, your, your job's dead. Copywriter, if you're, if you're writing copy, if you're answering phones, if you're doing administration, like your, your, your job's gone. Like AI is going to take your job. This, this can't really speak in my voice. It can't tell my stories. It can't do those things. My copywriter can. Now my copywriter can get a lot better using this and go a lot faster and build out ideas and more creative strategy of what he's going to expound on in my voice. And so that's the difference, I think, is if we can... If we can really figure that out. The other thing is I'm going to challenge you guys to just be a little bit careful of like buying courses and programs and things like this around AI right now. There's going to be a lot of people that are like flooding the market, trying to sell stuff and things like that. Um, and nobody really knows this like really, really well. Okay. It's like chat GPT for real estate. Like if it's for real estate investors, it's like, okay, like uh, it, we're not ready for that. Like uh, the only thing it can really do for you guys right now is what I showed you today that you can do on your own. Okay. So just be careful with some of that stuff. I think there's a lot of people that are going to come out and say, like, I'm an expert at this. I've been using this for a while, these kind of things. Like nobody's really been using chat GPT all that long. And, um, and most people don't actually understand it. And me included, like, I don't, I don't know it all. I, I will never say I know it all, but I probably use it more than some and not more than others. But I, I will say if we can keep like working together and sharing this stuff together, I think it's going to be great. So we've got a couple more questions. I'm going to answer them. Joseph said, there's a Zapier integration that will go through all your old emails and create auto responses to new messages based on your old responses auto magically. That's awesome. That's really cool. But I'll tell you what, if we can remove email, we can really uh, do a lot. Howard said, can it scroll the county records? No, it can't. So here, uh, watch, watch what will happen. So uh, Howard, what county are you in? Tell me what county you're in. Please give me a list of tax delinquent properties in Albany County. You don't have to spell correct, but I prefer to. 
I'm sorry, I'm not able to provide you with a list of tax delinquent properties in Albany County, New York, as this information is public, but it's constantly changing and depends on the county's website or the assessor's office. Da, 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 da. What I would do, and it says you can find this, in, it does give you how you can find it, what you can do, things like that. Online databases that specialize in these kind of things. So what I would say is, please write me an email that I can send to the county office requesting the list. Probably don't have to say anything more because I already asked about tax. So now it can write me an email requesting it. So this is one way, especially if it's not like you can't just download it. Most of you guys can go into the county uh, county website and download tax delinquent, uh, things like that. So here's an email, may highlight their content policy. So um, I, I would definitely remove real estate investor from this. Um, and I would say like, I'm a concerned citizen, something along those lines. Um, saying why you want it and, and things like that. So it can you can just adjust this a little bit, but this is this is nice. Um, you can you can write something like this up. There's lots of different options that you could do for that. So can't scroll the county records. Again, it's also not doesn't have current information in there. Like GPT three doesn't have like up to date real time info that's uh, that's out there. It doesn't even know who Bill Allen is. I showed you guys. It's a big problem. So. Casey said, I didn't mean any post in the group. There was a guy blowing up REI groups. Recently. Yeah, totally. Casey, there's going to be people like, it, look, here's the deal. It's like right now that everybody sees this. They, they're just getting like vying for attention. Like um, I know the most, I'm, I'm the best at this. I'm the smartest. I have something to sell you. And so I just say, be careful with that because everybody's learning it. Like in the marketing world, like the big marketing world, people have been using this stuff for like two years probably GPT-3 and platforms around it for like two years. Since chat GPT came out, it's like, if somebody uses like, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not the guy who bashes everybody else. So um, most people don't know what they're talking about. Okay. But they say, they say things to, um, to get interest, get attention, get um, things like that. So um, just jump in there, use it. I hope you guys have a great night. I had fun doing this and I haven't seen anybody talk about the chat GPT Jasper combination that, that I shared with you guys. I really do think that's powerful um, to be able to expound and, and not have to come up with a lot of different prompts. So I really like not having to do that and then uh, changing voice and tone of voice and stuff like that, and then bringing it back over. So that's kind of my technique. I realized I actually did have a strategy yesterday when I was building out all of my videos and I did it all in like an hour and an hour and a half for like 20, 25 Instagram reels um, that I created in the airplane. So for you guys, I, I have a process and I didn't realize it. So that's why I want to do this call today. So uh, I was out on a boat all day fishing and I'm insanely tired. And so now I'm going to bed. Uh, I hope, yeah, uh, Derek said, my daughter hasn't figured out how that she can use it to write papers, but it, it's, oh, it's coming. It's coming. Once one kid figures it out, they're all, they're all on board. So, and the teachers know uh, we caught a bunch. Of, so Lee, we caught uh, we went like 40 miles offshore and it was incredibly rough today. The wind was ripping a front pass through like while we were out there, the whole bite turned off. It was on. We had blackfin tuna behind the boat, bonita behind the boat, kingfish behind the boat. Um, we're down in Key West and we, um, the bite turned completely off when that front went through and we caught nothing for the next like hour and a half. So we caught a couple big Kings. We got sharked by, uh, quite a few sharks where we had a King, like probably had a 20 pound Kingfish that came in just its head, uh, mm -hmm. shark rip that thing up eight 20 pound kingfish quick we lost a couple probably really good tunas um we caught uh we caught a couple sharks we caught we got some big hits on the bottom or 220 feet of water uh we lost a lot of that stuff too and it probably had some uh mutton snapper and a couple groupers probably that we just couldn't get off the bottom so it was a good day i, I got it i on the way in it was so rough that i felt like they were somebody was filling up a bucket of water and throwing it on me every three seconds uh, I had my foul weather gear, and, but I I was soaked. So got home, made some cheeseburgers because the only thing we brought home was a like 25 pound kingfish. And um, we'll take it home for smoked kingfish dip. And we ate cheeseburgers today instead of fish. So it's kind of disappointing, but it's going to be uh, like uh, five to six foot seas the whole time we're out here. Last year was like completely flat. And this year it's winds ripping like 20 knots. So for any fisherman, there's your fishing report of Key West for the next week, but we'll have fun. Um, we'll probably have to keep it inshore, um, try to find some mangrove snapper and yellowtail snapper and stuff like that the rest of the trip. So, uh, all right, I'm going to go to bed. Have a great night, everybody. Uh, I hope this was fun and, and interesting. And, and um, please like drop, <laughs> I love that. He, now he's figured out how to write on it. Can you guys see that? Can you see Justin Taylor's writing? That's awesome. I have no idea how he did that. So a uh, cool life hack for you guys. 
Um, and thanks for coming and hanging out with me. I had a good time.